So finally, we reach the end of the first section of this course, and it's time to practice some of the skills that you've learned so far. First, let's do a quick overview of the things that were covered in this course so far. We covered how to get PHP up and running, what web servers are and how they work. We covered how to work with PHP's configuration and some important directives. We covered the syntax, data types, typecasting, how to use PHP within HTML, how to work with floating numbers, and so on. We also covered operators, operator precedence, control structures, how to work with arrays, dates, and file system. We've covered how to work with Apache's configuration files and virtual hosts. We covered how to handle errors in a procedural way. We covered how to create and use functions and different types of functions. We've also covered some of the new PHP 8 features, some performance tips, and a lot of other things. Now, the best way to apply that knowledge is to practice it and build something with it. The problem is that we have not covered all the things that you need to know to build an application like forms, requests, validation, sessions, cookies, security, how to deploy it, and so on. While while this project for the first section of the course is going to be small and simple, it will let you practice those things that we've covered so far and you can see how you can apply that knowledge because it all gets fun and interesting when you actually work on a project and not just learn the theory. The practice is what makes it stick. So let's talk a little bit about the project. The application we will be building is going to be a simple budgeting or expense tracking application. Basically an application where you can track your income and expenses, categorize them and so on. So because we have not covered some of the intermediate or advanced topics, including object-oriented PHP, we'll build a small part of the application using procedural PHP. A small part of the application that we'll be building in the next lesson is going to be a simple file parser, where you have one or multiple CSV files, and your goal is to parse them and import it into your application, extract transactions from it, and store them in memory for now, like an array. And later, of course, we'll store it in a database. You don't need to build any fancy UI for it, just a simple HTML table will be fine. The detailed instructions are in the GitHub repository for which the link is in the description. So just give it a try and if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments or send me a message on Twitter. With that being said, the first section of the course is now complete. I might later add some additional videos to this section if I feel like something was missed, which is the main reason why I numbered the sections with one point x 2.x and 3.x it leaves room for me to update it if needed and add more videos in each individual sections later down the road so i hope you enjoyed the first section of the course thank you so much for watching in the next video i will implement the solution myself and then we'll begin the second section of the course soon after if you're looking forward to more content and like my lessons please give those videos thumbs up it really helps with the youtube's algorithm also comment below those videos for any questions or feedback that you might have subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet and I'll see you on the next video.